Hey guys, today we'll be discussing the code forces round 865 that was rated for div 2. We'll be uh, discussing the problem A, B and C. So this is the very uh, very first problem. Uh, the description is a bit long. We'll try to cover it faster. So the problem is Ian vis uh, visits Mary. So the problem basically states is that you have to go from 0, 0 to a, another coordinate that, that is uh, X and Y. However, while doing so, whatever path you may choose, that path should not contain another cube. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's say this is the uh, this is the Cartesian coordinate as we know it. Now, if let's say this is the path right over here, right, and or let's say this is the point right over here, and this point actually is six six. So let me okay, let me just draw it again. So let's say this point is right over here. So you can see clearly that if I'm drawing a line from this particular point to my origin, then it's passing across all the cubes that is from uh. 0 0 and 1 1 then 2 2 these are the cubes right that are perfect integer, coordin uh, integer coordinates it's passing through all of them now i don't want this to happen now what is the uh, scenario when this kind of a thing won't happen now the basic understanding is that this w would not happen if and only if uh the gcd of the two numbers right so let's say you are going from 0 0 to x y in that case the difference uh of the distance between the x coordinates and the distance between the y coordinates that number should have a gcd equal to 1 that's basic so let's say if i want to uh, travel to 6 5 so 6 5 is just the coordinate that's next to it but even if i try that then you can see that no perfect coordinate actually matches right this is only because uh, it, uh, the gcd is actually different so gcd for 6 5 is actually 1 however gcd for 6 6 was actually uh, was actually uh, 6 itself you can test this argument and you can uh, try to pro prove it mathematically but that's not the aim to solve the uh, like that's not the way to solve the first question so intuitively we can understand this claim and knowing that what i can say is that the way to make the gcd of two numbers not uh, equ uh, like exactly equal to one is that i can state one of the numbers as one itself so the gcd of two numbers that is one and any other number for that matter would always be one so that is what I uh, I did for the very first question. So I said that okay, firstly I'll go I'll be going to the point one comma y minus one. Now whatever the value of y minus one is, I'm not even concerned about that. I'll I simply know that if I if I'm using this particular strategy, then the GCD is one, right? Whatever the value of y may be, then I've re already already reached uh, one comma y minus one by now, and I've not done any invalid move for that matter. Now I'll say uh, the final aim or the final goal where I wanted to reach was actually x y. So in order to reach over there, what I'll say is that I'll now go to x, y. Now, would this be a valid move? So if you look at, uh, look clearly over here, then the differences of the x and y coordinate is that uh, the distance for x coordinate would be x minus one. However, the distance for the y coordinate would just be one. Now, again, for the two numbers, one of the number is actually one. So the GCD is also going to be one. And this certainly is going to pass. So we just print the number of operation and then one comma y minus one and then x comma y. Uh, any doubts in this? All good? Okay, great. Let's move to the next question. Uh, the next question is gre uh, grid reconstruction. So the problem states that consider a 2 into n grid, right, where n is an even number. Now they provide some long explanation, but the gist is that there would be a grid that would be of size 2 into n, that is two rows in n columns. n also would be even over here. What you need to do is that you need to start at the cell 1 comma 1 and you need to go all the way to the cell 2 comma n however in this entire process from of going from 1 comma 1 to 2 comma n uh, whatever cells you'll be visiting you'll be taking the alternating sums of them what do i mean by alternating sums so let's say the cell uh, first cell definitely is 1 1 so that will take positive whatever the cell is next that you visit you will take that value as negative then positive then negative so on so forth at the end you will be able to come up with the certain value for this particular path now your aim is to minimize uh, to maximize this particular value so we'll see that this is easy but what they say is that across all the possible paths that would exist in this particular traversal you have to make sure that the even the minimum value is maximized so how would you do that so there are some of uh, some observations which uh, can help you over here let's talk about them so the very first thing is that you can say since my okay this is not the right color yellow white okay so you can say that okay so since my n is positive uh, n is even right as this stated okay give me a second someone again came okay 
since my n is even so what i can say is that the number of nodes between 1 1 and 2 n would be odd how can i say that so let's just take the simple example so let's say from here you hopped over here then over here then over here then over here right so what is the total number of nodes you travel to so this would be 1 2 3 4 and 5 right or in general you can just say that the total number of nodes would be n plus 2 minus 1 that is basically saying n plus m minus 1 in other words right so n plus 2 minus 1 since n is even so n plus 2 minus 1 would be odd now why is this important this is important because your uh, your first node definitely would be positive right or the contribution of this node to the final score is going to be positive and hence so you will be having a scenario like positive then negative positive then negative positive then negative so on and so forth at the end what would we have uh, what would we have a positive or a negative now since over here the number of elements would be odd right so uh, at the end you will be having the same parity as the first digit so that would be positive as well looking at this you can say since you want to maximize your score so the biggest values possible you can keep at the very starting because this always won uh, is going to be a part of your answer and at the end right since your uh, since your starting cell and ending cells are obviously the uh, your answer uh, like always a part of your answer and also their contribution to your final score is positive so it would make sense to keep the biggest values over here let's just mark the uh, nodes that would give a positive contribution to the answer and let's mark the nodes that would give a negative contribution to the answer so the very first node would give a positive contribution needless to say we already claim that the uh, last node is also giving a positive contribution the node just below it would give a negative contribution right and same about uh, the uh, node to the right of it and this node and this node right and similarly from uh, from these nodes whichever node you can reach next would give a positive contribution right so these are the positive nodes so the negative nodes are denoted by green and the positive nodes are denoted by blue over here or in general you can say that for any point so over here we were using zero base indexing if we use the uh, over here we were initially using the one base indexing in case we use the zero base indexing so this would be zero zero this would be zero one so on so forth so you can say that if your i plus j if it's divisible by two right if it's divisible by two in that case its contribution is positive else its contribution is negative okay that's fine but how do i assign the values so i've already assigned two values i uh, i am still left with uh, 2n minus 2 values in total right how do i assign these 2n minus 2 values so i'll say it's an obvious choice that whatever values are being negative right or the blue ones okay not, not the blue but the green ones so the green ones are the neg negative values so for this i want to reduce the score so i'll say okay let's assign them the smallest value possible or basically i can say the values from 1 to n would be assigned to these blue coordinates but shall I randomly assign any value for any coordinate? No, that would actually make my answer wrong. The way I should rather assign these values, okay, okay. The way I should rather assign these values that I should sell, uh, <coughs> I should say that the biggest positive values would be concurrent to the biggest negative values as well, right? If I do that kind of a scenario, because what happens is that over here you only have one choice of moving down. So at only one location you will be able to move down, right? So either you can move uh, down in the first cell or in the second cell or in the third cell or in the n minus nth cell. You can move down at, at any cell, but once you move down, there's no uh, way of coming back up, right? So you can say if your cells, right? The, let's say these are the cells from right uh, left to right. If these are consecutive, uh, like you'll definitely be going from one cell to other. If the positive values are maximized over here, then it can actually handle the big, bigger negative values as well, right? And similarly, if your pos uh, if your negative values are small over here, then assigning uh, small positive values also over here would not affect your score much. Does that make sense? So this is exactly what what we wanted to achieve. So we'll say we'll uh, populate our vector in this particular manner. Any doubts in this? Uh, can you reiterate once again why it is good to place most negative? uh behind the most positive one yeah sure so see uh okay i'll give more proof for that so i already said that assign the biggest values to the uh starting in the ending cell right so you already assigned two into n and two into n minus one to the uh, this you assigned to the starting cell let's say and this you assigned to the ending cell right 
Now, this would always be a part of your answer or the positive values to this. The problem, however, is that whatever negative values we are going to assign, right? So, that they collectively would have some, let's say, ne negative contribution, right? And let's say this is the positive values that we are going to assign. So, these, these would be having some positive contribution. In total, I've already said that uh, the biggest values would be taken positive and the lowest values would be taken negative. Now, in total, their contribution would also be positive, right? That doesn't need the explicit proof. Uh, I think that's pretty understandable. The only uh, like case where it would ho not hold is when n is equal to 2 or I guess even in n is equal to 4, this can uh, hold true. So what I want to do is that this value, whatever this value is, let's call this x. So this is the only variable that would differ across different paths. I want to keep this value as high as possible, right? So let's say now in, in a certain path, it's possible that you are having a lot of positive values and you have very minimum negative value, right? In that case, your x would definitely increase. But if this is a possibility, then the other possibility would be that you'll have some less positive values, but higher negative values as well, right? Comparatively. Th this makes sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we want to avoid this kind of a scenario. This kind of a scenario needs to be avoided. Now what we can do to avoid this scenario, we can say that if the values of, uh, if the positive values are bigger, then we also want to make the negative values bigger over there. And, uh, and the same, uh, same, uh, same go, uh, goes vice versa. Make sense now? Yeah, yeah, but it was not very intuitive for me. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, if positive, negative, positive, then it will cut it and then it will cut it. Yes, it will cut it, but it should be magnitude, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Similar magnitude hona chahiye. If it's a bigger positive, then a bigger negative would come. Absolutely, yes. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's what I coded. Let me show you the code. So the code is right over here. Okay, not this one. This is for. Yeah, this is for B only. Cool. Okay, so initially I'm assigning the biggest value to the zero zero coordinate, and I'm assigning the value two into n minus one to the last coordinate. After that, I'm running a uh, loop. So this loop would assign the values to all the. Okay. This loop would assign the values to all the odd coordinates, which would have a negative contribution. Okay, negative contribution, right? And this loop would assign the value to the uh, even coordinates, which are having a positive contribution. Make sense? Now, what I'm saying is that since I wanted, okay, uh, yeah, this, this is fine. Since I wanted the lowest values to be assigned to the odd coordinates or the negative contribution ones, I'll start this value by L, where L would be initialized to 1. Over here, since I wanted these values to be the biggest, I'll start this value from R, where R would be initialized to 2 into n minus 2, the reason being that 2 into n and 2 into n minus 1 have already been assigned. Right. So yeah, this was the log logic for problem B. If you still have a doubt, you can uh, probably after this video, you can go by, the, uh, by, uh, by this uh, code. And if you have a doubt, then you can ask me. Okay, so the last question we are gonna discuss is AN and so, uh, array sorting. So the problem states that, uh, I don't know like what the pro why the problem is big, but it's, uh, the simple thing is that you, you will be given an array. At any point, what you can do is you can select a index i. That should not be the last element, of course. So you can select the index i and for the element, at the index i and for the element at the index i plus one, you can either decrease both the ele elements or you can increase both the elements by one. And you can uh, uh, perform these operations any finite number of times. What do we want is that after a certain number of operations, your array should actually become sorted. So how would you even do this? So if you want your array to be sorted and over here, uh, so you can say that, okay, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the very zeroth element or the first element to be as small as possible and the last element to be as big as possible, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll say that the zeroth element, we're gonna make as small as, po uh, as, small as possible and the last element we're gonna make as big as possible. I don't even think that uh, iPad is required for this. This is easy to understand. So I'll say that, let's say the negative value I'm looking for is minus one is 16. Now, the interesting thing is that why minus one is 16? Because we wanted to have a value that uh, actually is greater than the sum of all the numbers. So initially I took it at uh, 1 e10 is and I got a wrong answer. So I took minus 1 e16, right? 
so let's say if it's minus 1 is 16 that what i can do then i'll say okay i'm gonna uh, make this value minus 1 is 16 for that how many number of operations would i have to do in such a way that i decrease the first element so that would be the value minus 1 is 16 minus uh, v naught or whatever values there at the start of the array now whatever the difference is that i denoted by d i'll subtract uh, this value from the zeroth element and from the first element so as to make a valid operation of uh, of decrement right now i'll say i'll uh, i want to maximize the value that is there at the last right so i want to maximize it now what is the value i can keep over here so i just want to keep it to infinity but infinity does not exist so uh, as i kept the starting value as minus 1 is 16 i'll keep this value as plus 1 is 16 right and i'll denote it by the difference and i'll add this value to the last and second last element now for all the remaining elements so my first element and the last elements have already been made as big as possible, right? Now what I want to do is for all the remaining elements, I'll start from the left. And what I'll do is I'll check if my current element, if it's greater than the uh, previous element. So if the, uh, okay, over here. Okay, if the current element, if it's less than the previous element, that, that, uh, that means the error is not sorted. Right. If the error is not sorted, that's bad for me. So I need to make this greater. How can I do that? So what I can say is that, okay, I'm going to increase this element I and the element just to the right of it. So by how much amount do I need to increase it? I want to increase it as low as possible because I want to keep the left part of the array as small as possible. So this is the smallest amount which I can uh, with which I can increase it. Smallest increment. Okay, increment to make array from 0 to i sorted right sorted okay so this is the lowest increment i can uh, i can have i'll do this increment to both i and i plus 1 now i'll say if this is not the case and in case this current value is already greater than the previous value then also i greatly want to make it equal because what 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 uh, what i already stated is that i want to make the smallest increment possible or i want to make Okay, so what I want actually to achieve is, okay, let me write, write it over here. So what I want to achieve is, I want that the array from 0 to i should be sorted and a of i should be as less as possible. Right. Now if my a of i is greater than a of i minus 1 or, or my v of i is greater than v of i minus 1, in that case, okay, I can remove this actually. I was using for this for debugging anyway, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so in that, if that's the case, in that case, I'll say that, okay, I'm going to decrease this particular element to a point such that it becomes equal to the previous element, right? I'll do that. So what's the difference between this and the previous element? It's uh, V of i minus V of i minus 1. I'll decrease this element and the next element to it so as to make a, you know, a valid operation. And once I'm done with that, so I need to check that if the current array is already sorted or not. Uh, I did it like this. You can have simply written that. Okay, you can have written like this. And then you can have said, if your v of i is greater than v of i plus 1, then print a no. Else print a yes. So yeah, that's it about this question. Nothing uh, like uh, nothing complicated, but yeah, just this one observation that you want to greedily make your array till the index i as less as possible. So that was it for this question. Any doubts in this? Uh, guys, any doubts in this? Or I'm going to close the session. Okay, for C, I tried. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, what did you try? So you made it maximum, you made 10 to power 9 plus 1. Anyway, let me close the recording. We're going to take this doubt later on. Let me close the recording first. Cool, guys. Thanks.